So I'm just dry fitting the, uh, the angled corner carcasses. I've done the little top box already and that's gone together okay. Uh, I'm just about to do the main, uh, the main carcass now. I had a lot of problems with these yesterday. Um, uh, uh, entirely of my own doing. Just, just you know, we have bad days sometimes, and yesterday was a bad day. Uh, inconsistent approach. Me who keeps banging on about consistency. Uh, got some things badly wrong. I ended up cutting these side pieces five times, redoing them, and just getting them wrong. Stupid, silly mistakes. So uh, I'm, I'm well behind on these now. Uh, not, you know, not a great position to be in, but. Today's another day. We are moving forwards. Um, so yeah, as I say, I don't normally dry fit, but for this particular one, it was such a headache getting it to here. Um, I will do. So we're just going to whack in a few dominoes. Oh. The dominoes are a tight enough friction fit to keep everything together, even while applying a little dissuasion from the training hammer. Okay, so this is sagging slightly in the middle here because it's it's lying down. Um, we will put a pop a few little screws through there to keep this in place. But generally speaking, actually that's not bad. Um, when you're dealing handling anything with beveled edges like this, you've got to be very careful because it's they they can be quite sharp. Sorry, cutting my head off again. Yep. Yeah, so you just need to take care. I often wear gloves, and of course. I you know, I've got so many pairs of gloves and, and ear defenders, I can't find a single pair when you need them. Um, but yeah, that's okay, I can, I can, that's fine, that'll all pull together nicely. Uh, so no particular problems with that. Uh, so yeah, let's get this disassembled and start painting. Yay. There's about 40 individual components in these wardrobes many of which need to be painted on both sides with a primer undercoat followed by two top coats in an eggshell finish. So I'm not going to show the whole thing. If you're interested in the process I've done a whole set of videos on painting and finishing and I'd encourage you to go and watch those. You know, when you've got lots of little wooden knobs that you need to paint, a good trick is to put the screw into the knob like that, and then you've got something to hold it by while you paint it. And then when you're finished painting it, you can make up a little drying frame from two strips of whatever you've got, just pinned together onto a block hang that off a shelf and you've got some uh, for them to dry. So what we're doing here, we're just going to give you a quick demo of um, how I scribe an end panel. When I make wardrobes like this where, uh, where it's not in, a, in an alcove or a niche um, and one, one end of the wardrobe is exposed, I like to put an end panel on. This is just a piece of half inch 12mm uh, MDF that's painted the same colours, that uh, same colour as the wardrobe carcasses and doors, and it just provides a single clean sort of skin on the end of the of the wardrobe. It covers uh, the gap, uh, excuse me, the join between the wardrobe and top box carcasses. It covers any gap between the back of the carcass and the wall. Uh, it projects forward of the doors and lines up with the front edge of the door, so it just makes a nice clean sort of uh, finish to the wardrobe, but of course you've got to work out how deep that needs to be to get the front of the panel to line up nicely with the front of the doors, and that process is called, is called scribing. Now to explain it a little bit more, uh, I've got a little model set up here. Let's break this down for you so you can see what's going on. So if you imagine this is our back wall, 
Uh, and this is our skirting board, our baseboard. That's the thickness of it, more or less. Um, sometimes you can take the skirting board out. I, I can't in, in this uh, situation. The client's requested that I leave it in, so that's fine. Uh, the carcass goes firmly against that. Then we've got our door. And normally there's a couple of mil gap between the door and the carcass. So I'm just putting a couple of green two millimeters packers in there. And then this is our end panel. This is our, our mock end panel. It's the same uh, height, same depth as the uh, as the previous, uh, as the real one. Now this extends uh, in front of the, the doors here. In fact, what I'm going to do, normally you do this with the end panel upright like this. We're going to lie it flat just so that you can see what's going on. So what we do, you can see that this, our little mock end panel here, extends in front of the actual door at the moment. Uh, so what we do, we bring that forwards a little bit more. We take a little scrap of uh, offcut of whatever, this is 12 mil half inch MDF. And we just let that panel run back until it's absolutely flush that 12 mil and then we can scribe normally you'd scribe this sort of up and down the wall um, obviously you wouldn't be able to see much there and you, you'll see that in in real life uh, when we scribe this for real but then what you do you'd scribe a pencil line against your end panel using the little 12 mil or block of wood offset and you'd run that up and down the wall so that it, it accounts for the sort of undulations in and out of the wall and then you can cut to that scribe line and you get a perfect fit. It's around now that I remember I have to cut down the hanging rails. You can do this with a hacksaw the grinder is much more satisfying. So when it comes to marking up the hinge positions in the carcasses, uh, whether it's the top boxes like these or the uh, the, the main sort of wardrobe carcasses, uh, I just use the uh, a little plastic uh, jig that I, I showed earlier. I think when we were to initially talking about hinges, very simple, very cheap and cheerful. A um, couple of pounds, three dollars, whatever, uh, on eBay or Amazon, and uh, the, it really is the you know the simplest thing in the world to use. Um, for the top boxes what we need to do is mark the offset. Again I'm using a sliding square for this, combination square. And then I mark the hinge plate positions with an all. Drilling out the pilot hole. Job done. And marking the hinge positions for the carcass is identical. We just use our story stick instead of measuring each one. When it comes to marking out the screw hole positions for the hinges, for the cup hinges in the doors, um, I don't use anything more sophisticated than uh, one of the hinges itself. Uh, uh, I put a, a self-centering self bit into the drill. I put the hinge in the door. Normally you can sort of eyeball this. If you need a bit of help, then a simple little £2 template will give you enough guidance for the straightness of the hinge. That's all you need.
Yeah, it's kind of quiet, isn't it? Unfortunately, part of my bad day continued, and I managed to record some of this without sound. I also lost part of the video of the build, as well as a couple of the sections of the install. So, not one of my finest hours, and I hope that this voiceover goes some way to explain what's going on. Basically, I've already built the single angled carcass. It went together without any dramas, just like the dry fit. And that's been moved to one side so I can make the top boxes. And here I'm working on the double top box. Again, this is a straightforward build, and if you've seen my previous videos, you'll be familiar with how it goes. Dominoes for alignment, plenty of glue and a few screws, with the backs simply stapled in place. <laughs> 